I can't really emphasise enough, really, for, particularly for amateur players, I cannot emphasise enough how important it is to not only understand what the natural angle is, but to then try to find the natural angle and understand that, yes, we can have an angle on a ball, but is it the angle? Hi guys, welcome back. And as you can see here, I have set up a drill and the drill is for understanding what the natural angles are. You know, I speak about it a lot, how important the natural angles are. So you should never really be having to play a shot unless you really have to. The natural physics of the balls. Where does this ball hit in this ball end up without instructing it to do anything? Just the physics of the two balls hitting each other. Now we know the physics of the balls are different to snooker because at snooker, both balls are the same size. In this instance, in eight ball pool, this cue ball is lighter and smaller. So the physics are completely different. Now, what this drill demonstrates is just how well you know your natural angles. And, you know, I do a lot of coaching, I do a lot of individual coaching, and the amount of people that actually say to me, yes, I understand the naturals, but do you actually understand the naturals? So the idea to this is, and I'm using the eight ball in this instance just for reference, is to pocket the eight ball in any pocket you choose and individually canning each ball in turn. And once you've hit that ball, that's off the table and then continue to the next ball. And just give yourself a little kind of guide a scoring system. Meaning if you happen to miss one of the cannons, you effectively you've, you've lost a life. How, how many lives is it gonna take you to complete this eight in what the natural angles are? So firstly, play the eight ball into the corner and naturally, not, not instructing anything, no stun, no side spin, nothing, cannon the ball. That ball effectively is then gone. Now you can use any ball that you want to re-spot, re it doesn't need to be the eight. Now if you're playing this ball, now on a natural angle, well we can't play it from here because now we'd have to stun into the ball. We can't play it from here because we'd have to top spin into the ball. So the only way that you're gonna hit this ball on a natural angle would be by playing the yellow ball into the center pocket and then play it into the center, cannon the ball. So that would be two from two effectively if you hadn't already missed it. The third shot would be one of these two balls. So we can't play this from here because we'd have to top spin through to cannon it. Okay, we couldn't play it into the center because we'd have to play a two cushion natural or we'd have to Again, stun into the ball. So a natural angle would be eight ball into the corner and cannon the red ball. And then that would be gone. And we do this in turn as we go until hopefully we pot all the balls. So, excuse me. So the idea here would be, just to demonstrate that, would be, okay, so I'm gonna cannon this ball first I deem that to be the natural angle, to pocket the ball, okay, and then hit the red ball. Okay, so, so far so good. Red ball into the center. Again, get your white exactly where you want it. Red ball into the center. And cannon your yellow ball. And so on and so on and so on. These six really, would be what I would consider beginner. And then it gets a little bit tricky. So how do I, how do I hit the two up there? I would then re-spot. Re and the only way I'm gonna hit this ball is by pocketing this ball into the center. Now what would be deemed to be an intermediate beginner here would be is if you catch the rail and hit the ball, you just continue on. But effectively, you are giving yourself a huge target here. So the more advanced or the more intermediate advanced would be to attempt to pocket the ball into the center pocket and cannon the ball. And so on and so on and so on. See how many lives it takes you to do it. But it's so important guys to get this natural. It's so important to understand what the natural angle is. This is a great drill to do it. Hope you get it all first time. But other than that, see how many lives it takes you. It's a scoring system. And when you can complete it, I'll give you another drill to do.
Okay, natural angles again, guys, and we've got another proposition here. We've got an eight ball. Now, where this is so important, you know, I can't even begin to, to, to tell you because you've landed on the eight ball, but you've landed near to the rail, which means that you're effectively, you know, you've got no shot in terms of instructing the cue ball to do anything. Well, certainly not in a nice manner. You're almost restricted to what you can do. And you fell on the eight ball in such a way where you've got this dilemma. And the dilemma is, if I pocket the eight ball in the corner, does the cue ball go into the centre? Effectively loss of games, particularly if you pot the eight ball, of course. So the idea here is, if I pot this eight ball, is the cue ball going into the centre or is it not going into the centre? Now, why this is important in this instance is because if you can play the shot to pocket the ball, and you don't deem it to be going into the centre, yes, it's a tricky shot, but nowhere near as tricky as if we've now got to get over the top of the cue ball in such, in such a way to instruct the cue ball to take a different line that doesn't scratch into the middle. So one shot is tricky, the other one is incredibly difficult. So if we pocket the eight ball into the corner pocket, do we know if we're going to scratch into the side or not? Because if we're not going to scratch into the side, but we deem that we are, and now we're trying to manipulate the cue ball by elevating the cue tip, we're making this shot 10, 20 times harder than what it needs to be, certainly when we're not even going to be scratching into the middle anyway. So we're doing it for no purpose. And, you know, maybe it becomes a 50-50 shot, depending on who's playing it. However, with a parallel cue, believing that we're not going to go in off, but we do, we then lose the game. So from a mindset point of view, we start to think these things of, I'm going to go in off, I'm going to go, particularly when you're under pressure. I get, I get asked a lot about how you deal with pressure and how you cope with nerves. And my answer to that would be is that I don't necessarily think you miss shots because of pressure, even though of course you can. I think it's more a mental error in choice and shot selection that happens when you're under pressure. You, you sometimes can make the wrong shot choices when you're under pressure. And it's really important to try and regroup and really kind of back yourself and have faith and confidence in yourself that you can make the right decisions when under pressure. And, and I think we've all done it. I think we've all played a shot that we know that we shouldn't be playing because the pressure has kicked in and we've played a different shot to what we should or we've attacked when we shouldn't have done, or we've defended when we shouldn't have done. Basically, not, not having a clear mind to make the correct decisions when we're under pressure. And if this was in a deciding frame in a match, I think most people would be elevating the cue here and making this shot ten times difficult than what it is, certainly if we didn't think it was going to scratch, or we're not sure if it's going to scratch. So, again, I appreciate that your camera view at home is different to mine because I'm actually right behind the shot. I will play the shot for you, but again, do you think it's going to scratch, or do you think I'm going to I'm going to pot the eight ball and not and not scratch? So let's have a look. Well, we missed the eight ball and we scratched. So it all went wrong there. So I need to play that again, guys. So, eight ball back to where it was. Cue ball near to the rail. Take two. Missed the eight ball on the top side. We scratched. Take number three. Will I scratch on this occasion? Yes, but I only just scratched off the, off the lower knuckle. So it was a scratch all day long, unfortunately. So what we needed to do is we did need to elevate the cue in this instance, and we would have been correct in actually making the shot more difficult because we would have scratched in the side otherwise. Could we have maybe avoided that from the previous shot, depending on where the ball sat? Possibly. You know, so that's something to obviously think about as well. 
but primarily knowing what's going to happen is really important. And I'd just like to do one more on that situation because this is an interesting factor. So we've got the eight ball here that's partially guarded by the yellow ball. And we've got a red ball here. And we've got a red ball here. And we're playing the both balls into the same pocket. Now where we land on this ball is really, really important because we're trying to pocket this ball and land on this ball in such a way where I can send the cue ball into the rail. And the reason why is, <clears throat> is this. When pocketing this and pocketing this ball, if I can hit the rail here, then I'm on the eight ball for all this length of time and I cannot possibly snooker myself. However, if I, mis if I misread this first shot, for example, and put the cue ball there, well, I now know that I'm, I'm actually going to scratch in the centre pocket. So the line now isn't my friend, which means I now have to stun the ball and instruct it. And in stunning the ball, I've now got to actually stun up this line. And the problem you have here is, is that you're never actually on the eight ball until you get to there. And then you're not on the eight ball anymore when you get to here. So effectively what's happened is I've actually given myself that much of a target area, maybe even that much in, in fairness. So I've given myself that much room to get onto the eight ball. If I get this first shot correct and I can find the natural in this instance to hit here, then I'm going to be on the eight ball for all this amount of time. So the first shot, the first red is so imperative that I actually find the natural line to hit here as opposed to having to screw up the line so effectively it's play the yellow ball in the corner the red ball i should say and then it's where did i actually get to am i actually okay i'm actually perfect in fact now i can play this into here just nice and actually i've got i'm, I'm going to be on the the eight ball probably for about two and a half three feet as opposed to just six inches. And this is really, really important, guys, running, going forward as a player, because that is very, very simple, even for most amateurs. But having to now stun the ball up because you played the shot before poorly, meaning that you bought the, the scratch into play and you couldn't play the natural, and having to stun up is a 10 times harder shot to play. So. There's so many different scenarios that we can do where the natural angle is imperative to not only understand it and then try to find it because as demonstrated here, it just makes the positional play and the game 10 times easier. Right, so continuing on the theme of natural angles. Now, why is it that I am such a big advocate of the natural angles? Because not only are the natural angles so important of what you can achieve in the shot that you're trying to play, but what about what you can't achieve in the shot that you're trying to play? And what about if there's just no escape without having to do something that you don't really want to do? So what we've basically set up here is, we set a shot up on the yellow ball into this corner pocket. And I'd like to play through and into this area, which would then give me a lot of options to then complete the yellows, play the eight ball in either of the two corners, you would think. But in this situation here, where the knowledge of understanding the natural angles really, really comes into play, because the question here is, is can I track the cue ball past these two reds and into the area that I want? Now, knowing this is so important, because if I can, this makes the whole simplicity of this, you know, so basic to, to just run off the cushion and into this area. But the problem that you have is, is if I believe that I'm cannoning into these reds because that's the natural angle, it's now going to force me to play a completely different shot. It's either going to force me to play into these balls, which I certainly don't want to do because the yellows, you know, have already got a clear path to any pocket that I choose to play them in, or I've got to potentially maybe come through this gap. Now, it might not be obvious to see on your camera, but I certainly can't come this way because I've too much angle for that. 
So if the camera angle deceives in any way, I've really only got the option of coming through here, which I wouldn't really want to play. Things can go wrong. I actually really want to play this way. It gives me a lot of room and a lot of space to, to obviously get onto the next yellow. But again, the question is, in pocketing the ball, can I actually get the cue ball past the red ball without actually cannoning? And this is something where once you really understand your natural angles and you really understand what you can and can't do with the cue ball, the game is going to be a lot easier to play. So let's say, for example, that you believe or I believe that we can't beat the ball. This now creates so many issues, but at least we know that we're going to have to play that because we've no other option. If we understand that we do know what the natural angles are and we do believe that we can beat the, the red balls without having to do anything crazy, this is just going to be so much easier. So I ask you the question at home and I appreciate that you're on a, your camera angle be a little bit different and I appreciate that I'm right behind the ball. But just before I demonstrate and play the shot, I want you to answer the question, can I pocket this ball and go past the red balls into this area or do you believe I'm actually going to cannon it? So let's actually have a look at what, what would happen if I potted the ball on a natural angle, didn't instruct it to do anything. Let's see where it would go. So there you have it. Was that what you said? Did you say that I was going to cannon it or did you think I was going to go past it? Okay, in this instance, I've still got some sort of shot, but it's all a little bit messy. It's spoilt everything. The shot just wasn't on. The shot just wasn't on. The natural angle did not allow me to go past those red balls and therefore effectively a, a, a spoilt the whole thing. If I could have understood that, I could, have, I could have played the more difficult shot, but with so much more reward if I would have played it correctly. Leading on from that, you at home can set up so many different scenarios of the understanding of this situation because we could have a situation where the eight ball and the, and the yellow ball are attached together and we want to be red balls and this could be the situation. Now clearly in, in attacking the eight ball here, we don't want to attack the eight ball like this because the yellow ball comes into play and the eight ball stays where it is. We don't really want to attack it in that manner. We would like to attack it in such a way where we hit the cushion first, chip the eight ball into play, this ball is no longer there, and we've got this ball waiting. That would be the percentage way to play the shot, the shot with control. But therefore, what we've got to understand is, is that this here wouldn't be the difficult shot. That's not the, that, that's not the art to, 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 to develop in the eight ball. The real art to develop in the eight ball here is to find the line that we want. So in pocketing this ball here first, to then get onto this ball, is absolutely imperative. So playing the shot into the corner and leaving the white ball here means, yes, we have got an angle, but we haven't got the angle. We've got some sort of angle. And now we've got to execute and, dem and, and, and almost kind of force this line on our own accord makes the shot 10 times harder to play. However, if we're aware of this, and the previous shot offers a different opportunity, i.e. we pop the ball in the corner and now come through to here, well, that now just becomes a basic natural angle where you can't possibly miss the eight ball. The only way that you can miss the eight ball now cannon in that ball is if you instruct the cue ball to miss it, which of course you're not, you're not gonna do because you want to hit the eight ball. So the idea of the shot before leading to the, to the next shot on the natural angle in this instance is absolutely imperative. There, some angle, but we've got to play a good shot to get into the eight ball. There, we're absolutely perfect. And the idea of being here would then be to pop the ball and not the eight ball into play. So. I can't really emphasise enough, really, for, particularly for amateur players, I cannot emphasise enough how important it is to not only understand what the natural angle is, 
but to then try to find the natural angle and understand that, yes, we can have an angle on a ball, but is it the angle? Two completely different things and good luck with it. Do the drills, concentrate on your natural angles. I promise you, you'll be a better player overnight. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to like, subscribe and comment down below. I'll see you in the next video.